In the fight for global health, research isn't just an essential tool. It is also a weapon, a weapon that is powerful enough to enable us to save lives and to transform the future. The George Washington University has been in existence now for more than 200 years, and we're currently located about six blocks from the White House here in the nation's capital. While the School of Public Health has only existed for about 30 years, we've grown very rapidly. We have around 2,200 students, about $80 million worth of research that's funded. And we've become a major player here in Washington, D.C. in terms of both domestic and global health. Research here has a major impact on global health in three ways. One way is to identify things that need to be changed in order to promote health, the conditions that people live under socially, environmentally, and to find ways to effectuate those changes around the world, which is not as easy as it sounds. The second thing that we do is evaluate global health interventions. We take very critical look at the things that people are doing to make sure they actually work. Finally, we encourage and are involved in collaboration across the world in global health for things like prevention of pandemics and other global health problems that require countries to get together. I say what sets George Washington University apart from others is fearlessness. We go into areas that others would say, that's controversial, don't do it. One is on climate and health, where we look globally at the burden of disease that's related to climate change and air pollution. We do research on nutrition and health and food systems and how food systems are making people unhealthy, either sometimes by not providing people with enough nutrition or overnutrition and causing obesity and obesity-related chronic disease and doing intervention studies to make sure that interventions that people are funding and carrying out in communities are actually producing the health benefits that they're intended to produce. My name is Nirvay Kumar. I'm professor of global health and our goal is to develop a combination of vaccines that can effectively eliminate malaria in the world. Malaria is a disease caused by parasites in humans, and the parasites are transmitted by female and Anopheles mosquitoes. There are four different species of parasites which are responsible for 263 million infections every year. It also puts nearly half the world's population at risk of getting malaria infection. With the result, there is a tremendous impact on the economy of those countries where malaria continues to infect people. And also, it is one of the reasons as to why there is poverty in, in many of those countries. Malaria is endemic in more than 85 different countries in the world, but 80 to 90% of the malaria cases occur in Sub-Saharan Africa. As of 2023, the official number is about 600,000 deaths per year, and that actually amounts to about 1,500 to 2,000 deaths per day. It's primarily young children, and also malaria has a uh, uh, pretty devastating consequence uh, in, during pregnancy as well. Vaccines in general have been one of the most effective public health approaches for dealing with any infectious disease. And when it comes to malaria, which is such a complex infection, it is all the more important that we develop effective vaccines to stop the infection to a point that it can be considered as eliminated. mRNA vaccine technology has been proven to be absolutely effective against infections like COVID-19. We have been using DNA vaccine approach, but the mRNA vaccine approach really offers the most effective and most uh, easy solution, especially when the goal is combining vaccines so that you can target the infection process by targeting multiple stages in the parasite's life cycle. I am Dr. Amita Vias. I'm a professor and director of the Center of Excellence in Maternal and Child Health. There's one moment in a woman's life, in a girl's life, that is what many consider to be catalytic, and that's adolescence. When a young girl 
turns 13, 14, 15. It's a moment where the doors can open wide open to opportunity, or it's a moment where life can become incredibly dangerous. It's a moment when she can be married off early. She can have children at young ages, experience gender-based violence, and all of that prohibits and puts up barriers to her ability to flourish, to be healthy, and to participate in the workforce. If we can change the way that people value girls, particularly adolescent girls, I think that we can have this ripple effect in terms of changing their entire trajectory across their lifespan. My entire team in the Maternal and Child Health Program here at the school, we launched a study a few years ago to really do a deep dive and to fully understand what's driving some of these maternal health disparities. We conducted surveys with women and young adults of clinics and clinic administrators, interviews with providers, we did focus groups with women, and we pulled all of what we call mixed methods research together to really identify what are the key issues that need to be addressed. My name's Emily Smith. I'm an associate professor of global health and nutrition sciences. In terms of the places where it can make the biggest benefit, we're looking at Southeast Asia and most of Sub-Saharan Africa, where there is a high burden of undernutrition, and we also have a high burden of, of adverse birth outcomes, meaning it's really common that babies are born too soon or too small, or that babies die in the first few weeks of, of life, or that moms are undernourished or anemic. So all of those problems are, are most common in those regions of the world. Collaboration is the foundation of public health work, whether it is research, whether it is designing, you know, interventions, solutions, policies. We collaborate both across the school and across the university with other researchers, with our students, with our staff, but perhaps more importantly, collaboration with communities. The kind of research that's important to do that will translate to real impact, you have to do it hand in hand with the community in which you want to impact. They are equal partners in so many ways in the work that we do, and particularly in the design of interventions and policy. In addition to the incredible research that I get to do here at the School of Public Health, my greatest joy is working with students. And I don't believe that we are gonna be able to address any of the big public health challenges ahead of us unless we have a high quality 21st century maternal and child health workforce. While students are here at the School of Public Health, we are not able to just provide the training, which is incredible, the, their master's in public health training and curriculum, but we're also able to offer enhanced training through our Center of Excellence in Maternal and Child Health. I started my my research life as a as a student and I'm thrilled on on my team we have a lot of students at all levels from undergraduate graduate and doctoral level who contribute to this research so working on everything from data analysis to logistics of research to working on some of our policy and advocacy efforts and we have students not only here at GW but we also have student collaborators in all of our our collaborating research sites in country uh, and so it's I think that's another great part of the opportunity of doing this type of work at universities is we have the chance to train the next generation of researchers and we have the chance for exchange between countries and different schools. Today, collaboration is absolutely key to successful research. There's no important questions that we have in public health and global health that can be solved with just one scientist, one discipline. You need to work together because we're working in complex systems with complex populations and because, frankly, the easy questions have been answered. It's a starting point that we understand what we need to do to promote health and we need to do to promote equity in health. A 
but that's only, that's only the beginning. The research is a necessary aspect, but it also requires a social commitment, political commitment to actually bring it into reality.